Namaste and good evening to one and all. Welcome to Leaders Connect 360's episode LC0133. Leaders Connect 360 is CSR initiative by Bija Training and organized by the Mass Leadership. My name is Janani and I am pursuing my BCom Honors degree at SRM. Leaders Connect 360 is started with a specific objective of inviting thousand plus leaders and create a million leaders. It is an online hub. where every Wednesday from 6:30 pm to 7:15 pm we learn from top management leaders on zoom live and once in quarter in each city we have an offline networking meet to network support and grow with the leaders that's when we call it leaders create more leaders currently all are muted and we will be giving you an opportunity to speak to our guest dr anshul dingra founder sme center of excellence Before you are unmuted let me share that we are currently live on LinkedIn and this episode LC0133 is being recorded First time visitors may click on the WhatsApp FB and LinkedIn link on the chat box to get updated by joining us in creating more leaders All in the house are requested to turn on your videos which will help in making the episode highly interactive So are we all ready to interact with our guest Dr Anshul Dingra and panel discussion leader Ms Rashmi Jaiswal founder research i then share a thumbs up or smiley emoji in the chat box thank you before the introduction of the guest let me also introduce ms divya corporate trainer and coach will interact with our guest along with the panel discussion leader ms rashmi jaiswal i shall welcome you all over to you ms divya thank you janani our m leader of leaders connect Uh, good evening, everybody. For thank you very much for joining our episode today. Good evening, Miss Dr. Anshul, for joining us. It is a pleasure and honor uh, to have you in the episode as a guest of honor today, sir. Thank you thank very you much. So much. Thank um, you. So much. Looking at the weather, we have uh, all the leaders joining us. There is network issue, and they are trying to connect with us as much as possible because it's pouring cats and dogs here. So let's wait for a couple of people while we interact, and they'll also join us. Um, I'll give the episode. Uh, to uh, rashmi before that uh, dr anshul could you please give us a you know overview of what is a episode about today because it's it's a little new for all of us so can you just give us a small overview after we see the introduction video of you and as well as our panel discussion leader ms rashmi so um, arul please play us the introduction video post which will have an idea and overview of what is a episode topic today yes arul Thank you. 
much, Haru. That is a wonderful video. Uh, before we uh, have a light on our episode topic, uh, I would love to welcome Rashmi, who is a content writer and uh, author of the book, Today's Panel Discussion. I, I believe it's going to be an amazing conversation between doctor and the content writer today. So, yes, sir. Uh, yes, Dr. Anshul, why don't you just throw a light on what are we talking about today? What is the episode all about? Great. First of all, uh, uh, good evening and happy belated Diwali to all of you. And uh, I hope this Diwali was very uh, bright and, uh, you know, happy for everyone. So first of all, thank you. So, uh, secondly, thank you so much uh, for inviting me to share uh, something about a beautiful concept on uh, Atmanirbha leader. And uh, I would also like to thank each one of you for taking this initiative along with, you know, this, this initiative which you are doing for a long time and I'm following it. Uh, and, and first of all, I must congratulate and compliment you for all your work which you have done. Thank you so much for igniting the spirit. I, my vision and my thought behind Atmanirbhar leaders is more or less aligned with what you're doing. And uh, so now post COVID, so I was into trainings, consulting for a long time and then post COVID and rather during COVID, I realized that, you know, being Indians, we feel proud only few times when we do something great, we win the match, uh, we, and 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 sometimes you know we have, we we uh, we reach on moon or there are very few incidences when we feel proud to be uh, a, a nation and uh, we proud to be a part of our nation. But what is missing? Sometimes either we are too much uh, engrossed in our own aspirations of the world and we are by our goals, our ambition. Then there is an organization. Sometimes when we are working or either in a business, we are driven by either our clients or our, the organization. So sometimes where is the feeling of nationalistic leaders? Who is a person who is, who is really willing to contribute to the nation? Or am I really contributing and am I really gauging it or not? So I coined this concept after meeting a lot of leaders and discussing uh, holistically how leadership can be done, how, how leaders should be uh, from an Indian perspective. So Atmanirbhar leader is a concept for Indian leaders because uh, there is so much uh, we are influenced by the Western world. We read a lot of books about that and, and we just try to copy paste all these things. Uh, this is a concept for an Indian leader. Indian, which has traditionally high, uh, uh, rich culture, uh, based on fundamentally based on value system, fundamentally based on relationship, fundamentally based on uh, altruism, thinking about others first, then for ourselves. This is where we are. This is who we are. And we are not actually enriching those qualities which an Atmanirbha leader. And then when I when I re read about the discussion of uh, and and the thought of uh, our, our Prime Minister Narendra Modi about Atmanirbhar Bharat, I I was able to relate somehow with the thought of that self-reliant Indian. And self-reliant Indian can only be possible when we try to inculcate those element of leadership in every aspect of society. And thinking not just for ourselves, for our organization, but for society and for nation as well. So this whole coin, this whole concept is more towards uh, aligning our thought process towards a nationalistic leadership thought view and, uh, and taking it forward from there. So I've heard of organizational, uh, uh, what can I say, organizational way of goal setting and connecting yourself with a goal of individual goal to organizational goal which now I am connecting with the individual goal to the country's goal, some sort yes. of, you know, you know yes. some sort of understanding where do we come from? We have so much influence from different, you know, part of the world, be it Western or Eastern. Ideally, many of us don't even understand what value we come from as Indians. Right. What is that we want to do? What is that our forefathers have got it from? So right. I think this episode is going to throw some light on all these aspects, especially value adds, how can a leader portray that in your own, be it business or employment, uh, we will understand how uh, efficiently we'd be able to uh, portray and implement that in our everyday routine. So yes. without any further ado, I give the mic to Ms. Rashmi to yes. go ahead and do the panel discussion of uh, today's episode. Uh, let me see how uh, enlightened I can be with this uh, uh, discussion with both of you. Over to you, ma'am. Madam, you are in mute. 
sorry uh, hi devya thank you so much uh, arul that was a beautiful video yes. as usual our team is doing fantastic uh, in presenting profiles in presenting new leaders to opening up new discussions and new avenues for our leaders uh, namaste dr anshul dingra नमस्कार नमस्कार नरेंद्र मोदी फर्दर आउटलाइन फाइव पिलर्स ऑफ आत्मनिर्भर भारत दैट इज इकोनॉमी इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर सिस्टम vibrant democracy and demand so yes. with all this my first question would be in today's interconnected world what qualities define an atmanirbhar leader qualities that define an atmanirbhar leader and second part is how do these attributes contribute to fostering self reliant india thank you thank you now that's a beautiful question now what are the attributes so when i met a lot of leaders at that time and i just want to add to the point where divya uh, gave uh, handed over to you uh, you know if you see that atmanirbhar leader we were all atmanirbhar leaders and we have seen those basic attributes in our own home when we are living when we used to live in a uh, joint families where every person is playing a role in order to make that ecosystem work smoothly and and beautifully and hence we all used to play certain roles but when it comes to our own aspiration we are doing it when it comes to an organizational achieving an organizational goal for an organization we are bound to do it but what about a leadership aspect for nation hence an atmanirbhar leader is somebody and post covid we have realized that uh, there is a need and there is a need for really connecting our ecosystem in a right way where every stakeholder be it our parents society communities nation everything should be aligned if we really want to be a superpower in the future and which we are on the verge of now what are the attributes attributes are a visionary foresight not for only for ourselves but for the nation as a whole so maybe this concept today sounds a little different and a different mm -hmm. approach Absolutely. to people yes. but but then if you give a thought on this aspect you will really find it really really interesting now secondly adaptability to change today i have seen people not adapting to change easily not from a concept perspective but from a perspective of doing something bigger for the society and actually evaluating on those aspects third very very important is an integrity aspect fifth element is about altruism which i really believe in you, you know caring for others uh, first then for ourselves so these are certain attributes being mindful of all the stakeholders while taking any step any action any crit critical decisions in your life be uh, having thoughtfulness of resourcefulness having thoughts of resourcefulness now what does that means now sometimes we all think that you know which which i seen a change in the indian perspective is from a thought that earlier we used to think that other developed nations are doing far better than us okay. we cannot be like them we don't have leaders like them and now you are sharing reels you are sharing pictures that there are so many indian leaders who are now heading certain big organizations across the globe you feel proud but they are the one who have taken themselves out with a different perspective now are they supporting back to the country yes are they making country proud yes so maybe in a bigger way or a smaller way are you doing something which your country should be proud of so that and feeling of resourcefulness is very very important now i don't want to be political here but this government in the last few years and few people in the government uh, like our finance minister like our our, our different ministers and uh, the way mr jay shankar is taking it the things forward now what they are showcasing to the world that we are self reliant you don't need to teach us how to take it further we know we are proud of who we are and we can develop it from here 
we can see our leaders going out discussing and taking things and uh, and and taking the best from the world to india but and making india self reliant the the initiatives like make in india all these things if you just connect the dots you will see uh, there is a thought behind creating a self sustained economy and for that feeling of resourcefulness is very very powerful that i have the efficient resources now how it will contribute if you see certain examples of the india uh, we see dr apj abdul kalam azad you know and his role in uh, india's defense and sp uh, space sector now till date as we have agni and prithvi missiles placed in india make us in that elite group of nations with that significant defense capabilities and reducing our dependency on foreign technology he has made us feel proud about that yes, okay. that is the story of a self reliant india similarly with kidar kiran mazumdar show at biocon what he has done in barma biopharmaceutical right. is again an another example uh, an example of narayan murthy and sudha murthy taking the way and leading the revolution in an it sector in india and now from that one infosys multiple small infosys and startups have been created across the globe so you know if you just see this is not just a definition this is just a kind of a different perspective which is uh, which needs to be imbibed whether i am con and i have to need to consciously ask myself whether i'm contributing mm -hmm. through my leadership ability to my community to my society to my family to my nation and if i do that that is going to change the way we look at things in india that is going to change the way we operate that is going to change the way uh, we, we we behave we operate we 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 and most importantly how we evaluate our progress today one of the leading factors is money if you have the money and if you have the success you are successful we are not celebrating failures we are not actually uh, most of us feel when we are not uh, uh, success in some other way but that is completely contrary to the society we used to have in india it is not about something where everything is successful it is about uh, how you are able to really capture that bigger niche and the thought is behind this atmanirbhar leader is one if you see the, the the some western movies some english movies you see they talk about uh, that they have a vision for their country it's an american dream they talk about an american dream who will talk about an indian dream there is no indian dream they are just missions they are just flagship things which is going around some people are doing this some people are doing this we are so much into political drama that we forget that we also have a dream but there is nothing conceptualized as an indian dream but all american movies talk about an american dream they talk about living that american dream so hence with this small initiative i really want to uh, take things into different perspective and try to just work on this concept build it further so that uh, a thought of atmanirbhar leader where leaders working for nation can can be done beautiful it's such an inspiring concept and i feel each person uh, has something to give to the country in whatever way so we should be mindful at both levels our personal level we should be mindful as what we are doing uh, in our life and what we are doing through our life what are we giving to the nation so so uh, these these two mindfulness that is at my personal level mindfulness uh like our yoga says about dhyan dharana meditation so yes. that mindfulness that is our personal level yes. so that is one circle i live in then i have a broader circle in the society then i have a broader circle in the country and then we go to the uh, then we go to the universe so uh, i i'm i'm really very inspired by the work that you're doing and it's just, it's such just a beautiful one, concept just one point to add as as divya is also into training and you might be attending training and doing things now this is one thing which we as a trainer do in most of our introspection trainings where we ask people to write down uh, you know about what is their vision for life correct and people used to say a lot of good things and get inspired with that concept of vision for life but then there is no vision for nation but if you, and and you know what happens when when people 
few of them, not many, but when few of my people, where I've been able to educate them about a vision for nation, and they're able to really introspect for that perspective, the way they operate started changing. Absolutely. It's a complete change because you're thinking from a bigger perspective and taking things into the next level. Yeah, it's an absolute macro wave. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Just to add on to one point here, see, I, I while you were comparing about uh, America uh, being uh, talking about their own vision, no matter which movie they take, be it science fiction, be it any any kind of superhero movie, they talk about America's, you know, some sort of uh, vision, vision, whatever it is. Now I'm able to relate that we unknowingly inculcate a lot of hatred towards our nation itself. Let's say that you know, why are they doing this? Why cannot they keep it clean? Why can't they just do this? Rather, I think we need that marketing strategy among ourselves to understand nature is doing a lot of things. Let's acknowledge that. Okay. Why don't you just spread the good rather than only pinpointing what is not happening? Every country has the has their own flaws. But where are we marketing our own country's uh, value adds, be it uh, women empowerment? There is There are so many women who are just empowered in India. Like yes. they, the very least they talk about it. I mean, yeah, I, I'm able to inspire so much with the talk you made now. I mean, that that's just the first question, Rashmi. The kind <laughs> of inspiration we got right now is like mind blowing. I'm like curious now. Great, 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 great. <laughs> uh, so we come to the next question. Uh, innovation is at the core of business and economy, uh, uh, economic growth. The leaders should see well ahead of times and encourage innovation. So the second question is, what role do innovation and entrepreneurship play in the journey towards Atmanebar Bharat and how can leaders encourage a culture of innovation in various sectors? Yeah. Now, uh, innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, in, this coined, in this coined framework of Atmanebar leader for Atmanebar Bharat is very, very important. And now why it is important? It is important because when we are trying to go on a journey towards self-reliant and being Atmanirbhar, what we need is basically a starting point of an innovation. We need to have ideas. We need to innovate things. We need to bring out fresh perspective to uh, things. We need to reinvent the wheel when it is required uh, in in some cases, uh, not all, but yes. And when you have innovation, who is going now? Entrepreneurship plays a very, very crucial role in India's growth and development and writing the success stories of India. So innovation and entrepreneurship, I can say these two uh, are the founding pillars of really creating spark for Atmanirbhar leaders. So what could be an Atmanirbhar leader if you just try to relate? He's somebody who is a, un, he's innovating something, trying to figure out a solution to an existing problem or a future problem which may arise. And he's trying to innovate on that. You are a researcher by yourself. You know the power of research and innovation in, in, in any aspect of life. Correct? And, uh, and hence, these both elements are very, 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 very important. And now this culture is also uh, bringing up. If you see Ratan Tata is doing a lot of, I feel one of the most ethical organization in our country we are proud of is, is Tata's. And now Ratan Tata in that era, he has also realized that there are certain elements uh, or a certain startups which are doing, uh, which have these two combinations of innovation and entrepreneurship. And sometimes people get confused with the definition of entrepreneurship. It's not just about starting a startup or, or trying to do a business. Entrepreneurship is a spirit rather than an action. So if you have that creative mind and you're trying to build that, you have that entrepreneurial ability or a spirit to drive it that, yes, this could be a solution. And that can be translated into some marketable solution. Very, very important. We have so many ideas. Absolutely. We have so much to innovate, but it should be marketable solution. Otherwise, we die our own death. So Atmanirbhar is, uh, is, is about uh, being holistic, being tenable, being systematic, being resilient, and at the same time, trying to you know, balance out aspiration with practicality. We should not, you know, on the day one, we should not start comparing ourselves 
developed uh, with a developed economy as in India. What we have done over a period of time is slowly developed Indian ecosystem. It slowly developed the mindset. It slowly developed the acumen of the people, skill set of the people. And now we are making an eye to eye contact with the best countries in the country, in the in the whole nation, and trying to prove our and trying to say what we want to say. Similarly, when we are innovating and we are entrepreneur, you must balance out everything. Because in aspiration, sometimes if you see startups are dying, why? Because it's just an aspirational balloon which get burst because it doesn't have evidentials. It, it doesn't have research work aligned to it. So hence, innovation and entrepreneurship are true strong uh, pillars, but it should be marketable solutions. And more importantly, now how to relate with Atmanirbharata? It should create jobs, wealth, prosperity for Indians, for majority of Indians. If you are able to give jobs to major people, if you are able to help them being more prosperous, you are you have played your own role of being an Atmanirbhar leader. Now, if you see uh, the, this culture of innovation, the government now again has started taking initiative to establish more IIT IMs and similar kind of institutions are coming up in the country where where you will see more more groundwork on innovation and entrepreneurship is being driven so that we want to drive it towards a knowledge driven economy which we were earlier as a proud India as a proud Bharat so we were growing moving towards that knowledge driven academy now again uh, if you see rising of startups in India and promotion of all these and creating an ecosystem around it is also one of the great initiatives to, to really support this aspect of innovation and entrepreneurship in India. So I think overall, these two are really the fundamental pillars on which this, uh, this concept is based. Thank you so much. Uh, knowledge has been, uh, we have been the epicenter of knowledge. Uh, right from so many years and uh, research, study, uh, innovation has uh, always been uh, a part of our lives. So, uh, uh, so uh, yes, it's very true that uh, we are a knowledge-based country and we should continue to be so and we should continue to not only compete but collaborate with other countries. Yes. So our next question is, uh, we live in an interdependent world, thus a leader should collaborate and yet foster self-reliance. Uh, considering the global landscape, how can Atmanirbhar leader strike a balance between collaboration with other nations and fostering self-reliance within India? Very, uh, very, very important question. And I, you know, now, Yes, it's a world of global collaboration. And today, today when we are having this discussion, today when we see the arena around 2020, 21, 22, 23, all these years, if you see, on collaboration front, India has taken a stand in the world. India has taken an eye-to-eye -eye contact stand in the world that this is what we need and this is what we can give. We were, we are now vocal about our strengths. We are now vocal when it comes to negotiating on every aspect. So now earlier collaboration was based on need. Today also it's based on need, but the perspective and the way we are now on a negotiating table has changed. Yes. Yes. And this is the new India. This is the new Atmanirbhar India, which is talking in uh, from that perspective. Now, coming back to the question, while the engagement with the global community is necessary for knowledge exchange, for technological advancement. Technology. Yeah, th this is very, very important. Yes. And if you see uh, recently, our ministers like Piyush Goel, uh, Nitin Gadgariji, they are visiting to different countries, understanding their technologies and trying to bring, bring things, uh, good things to India. And whatever we can give, we are also giving our technology, our strengths, our capabilities uh, to other countries as well. But the very, very important aspect, we should go for knowledge exchange. We should go for technological advancement. We should collaborate. But we need to focus on one very important element and we should not ignore strengthening domestic capabilities. We need to work on make in India, vocal for local. If we are not working on those aspects, if we are not promoting our local talents, our local things, 
correct? Like, for example, we recently have seen the, the Diwali festival. And it's like for years, people say that, you know, we should promote Diyas. We should promote Diyas. We should not go for the lights. But if you see, it's again there. We are still not able to, you know, we are, uh, as, an, as a nation, uh, most of us are very influenced by those lights. Whether we are promoting a Chinese product or not, I, I don't want to get into a debate on that. But we have people in India whose living depend on preparing those diyas. Okay. Man-made diyas. Man-made diyas. If, if we are able to promote them, we are able to export them. Today, we have a very beautiful company. I've been fortunate enough to visit there. It's in, it's in um, Mahabaleshwar. Uh, Sunrise Candles, correct, by Mr. Bhatia. He's a blind. Most of the workers who work, more than uh, 2,000 workers, I think, work there. They're all blind. They export to 65 countries. Oh, okay. So where is the, the thought of Atman Nirvarta is, yes, we, you know, sitting in a small city of Mahabaleshwar, exporting to 65 countries. What does it tell you? That's a uh, absolutely fabulous example of Atman Nirvar Bharat. Yes, that's an uh, and there are multiple of them, multiple of them. The, the, these kind of platforms and other platforms, we are utilizing them to promote these kind of things. We we have so much inside us. We don't need to now, but are we really promoting those diyas? No. How many of you, like for example, this happens, I used to do it, I have, um, you know, requested multiple people multiple times to, to really promote on social media and other things, mm -hmm. on your reels, as an influencer, just do it, just do it for them, you know, take one person, you know, in your nearby society, just help two of them, help three of them, start with one step, but very few, if I re request 10 or 20 people, one or two will do it, but that's where it's all about. If you don't focus on domestic capabilities, no knowledge exchange, no advancement will really support in Atmanirbhata. Why? Because what we are doing, if we are bringing good things in our home, like if you bring a good gadget for your kids, but if you don't know how to utilize them, there's no point of having those gadgets. Like the craze for iPhones. You know, you have a craze for iPhones. We feel it is a social status. It feels like that. But are we connecting that with an Atmanirvarta? No. But are we using more, you know, 90% of the apps within a phone are not utilized properly. But we have a status symbol called iPhone in our hand. So are we really strengthening domestic capabilities? That is a question I must ask as an Atmanirvar leader. If I'm producing or giving services as a business, as an individual, whatever I'm doing, Am I strengthening domestic capabilities? Now, just an example. Might be a weird example for most of the people who are listening to this. When we are hiring people, mm -hmm. we don't have patience to hire uh, an untrained person unless we have a budget issue. Mm -hmm. We want to get the best on board so that we take the things forward. And we want to get from anywhere and everywhere. Mm -hmm. Correct. Developing local talent is a very, very important very aspect. Very important. So true. So true. So, for example, if you see now people who has taken India to a global level, like Surinder, uh, Sundar Pichai, the CEO of Global uh, Alphabet and Google now, he represent the global impact of an Indian talent. While now what he has done, which he also don't know, that he has inspired a lot of people for technology and innovation because they feel that they can be the next CEO of a big organization in the country, in the world. Now, if you see India's role in International Solar Alliance highlights how it leads global renewable energy initiative while promoting local sustainable energy solutions as well. The lot which is happening in solar these days. Now, yes. if, you see, if you see collaboration between Indian government and foreign entities in the development of COVID-19 vaccine, is an exemplified uh, example of a strategic partnership. And there is a lot of other things which is happening in the finance uh, world as well, which uh, our, our, uh, our Honorable Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman is leading uh, to balance the global engagement with protection of domestic industries. So there is a lot which is happening slowly. But what we need to understand is collaboration 
is the step, is the, is the way forward. Yes, we should not compete. It's the way of world of collaboration. Although there is a lot of war, there is a lot of tension situations happening around. There is a need of uh, collaboration, but we should not ignore domestic capabilities. We need to work on developing domestic capabilities and then only that collaboration can work. Otherwise, it will other another uh, gimmick which we are going to play and we are going to burst the balloon soon. So true. I mean, when we sit at the negotiation table, we should always, it should always be a win-win situation and not a win-lose situation. That's what I strongly feel. And yes. we are at the stage where we are uh, I, not as a commanding, but not even not even demanding, but we can speak for ourselves for the first time in so many years. Yes. So uh, I really appreciate your point of view. We come to the fourth question. A yeah. leader empowers people and is actively involved in inspiring individuals. I feel the most prime um, role of a leader is to inspire people. Yeah. Uh, and... The fourth question is, what strategies can leaders implement to empower marginalized communities and ensure their active participation in the vision of Atmanirbhar Bharat? Now, again, a very good question. Uh, but if you, now, we need to understand the, the utilization of this word marginalized communities is mostly done only to impress or only to take advantage in a vote bank politics. Yeah, sure. Right. They have been just utilized for vote bank quality. And, and if you see now why they are very, very important for an Atmanirbhar Bharat and creating an Atmanirbhar leader out of those marginalized communities is very important today is because if you have not got something, the anger the aspiration within you is far more than somebody who has got it. You have the inner drive. If they are not given, uh, uh, you know, that's the statement. But if now they have a different perspective to life. I have been to various parts of the country, uh, meeting those communities, leaders, understanding their viewpoints. Yes, there are some, uh, uh, some very rigid viewpoints, but then... Another viewpoint, apart from vote bank politics, is there are a lot of ambitious people. There are a lot of people who have got some, you know, because they have, they they are the one who have not received the, uh, the, the Opportunity. opportunities. Hence, they have a lot of uh, great ideas. They have a lot of great thoughts in their mind. And hence, there is a need to nurture and channelize their things in the right way. Now, how that can be done? That can be done by really making them empowered through education. And that cannot be done by a government initiative. You know, when there is a government initiative, it will always be linked to a, a motive behind a, a political motive. It has to be done by NGOs. It has to be done by uh, other societal initiatives. It has to be done by people like us, where education for them and creating, like we used to inspire our people by by, by rewards and recognition. There has to be certain reward and recognition for creating success stories from this marginalized section of the society. There has to be something different for them so that we will bring out the best because they have worked in adversities. They have lived in adversities. And, and, and from that perspective, if you just channelize their brain, their energy in the right way, you can create some miracles. Now, true leadership involves about policies and initiatives that can uplift marginalized and equal opportunities for them. Now, although when I'm saying equal opportunity for them, uh, this sounds little good, but on the practical front, it is a little challenging part. But now people are getting equal opportunities when only when they are um, uh, qualified enough. They have, they have now uh, you know, but for a larger society of these section, we really need to do a lot now. Now, if you see what are the things which if you see some people, some examples of how these marginalized uh, communities have taken benefit and who has done those initiatives. Like if you see Varghese Kurian, uh, uh, the father of white revolution, 
he empowered those rural farmer and now transformed india's dairy industry improving livelihood of a lot of rural communities anand kumar super 30 he has now there is a movie on him right now he illustrated how educational initiatives can uplift talented student from underprivileged background ensuring they contribute and some of their some of his students are right now at a very very uh, you know great positions in india uh, there is an initiative uh, work which is done by a lady called Ella Bhatt uh, and the work uh, is under the brand name of Seva, Self-Employed Women's Association. They are highlighting how empowering women in the society, especially in the on informal sector, has really contributed to economic growth and social change. Uh, now, for example, uh, the government's beautiful initiative, which I have uh, seen working uh, also in a great way, is the India's uh, uh, Jan Dhan Yojana, which aimed for financial inclusion. How this is one of the beautiful example of how if a policy initiative created, drafted and executed in the right way can empower marginalized community by providing access to banking and financial services. Although they have their other benefits and hidden agenda, <laughs> agendas about this concept, but then it is actually benefiting people. Now, the people, those who were never aware of the bank accounts have a bank account. So there is a lot which is going, uh, doing, uh, we are doing for the marginalized, but still a lot needs to be done for them. And they can create a revolution in the concept of Atma Nirvata. Uh, they have huge potential. But they need to come out from that political perspective and see the nation first perspective. Only then that can happen. Yes, we all need to see the nation first perspective. We yes. all very much have to see it. And I also personally believe that education is a very powerful tool. I've been going to visiting a school uh, to teach uh, some kids now. Uh, they are from a very uh, simple background. You know, and they have their own challenges. So I've been teaching them since a year and I'm learning from them so that I can go back to the villages and I can teach. That is my, uh, my. I feel, I feel that it is my duty to do so. So uh, that, uh, not that I want to um, tell about myself or what I'm doing. It's just that, you know, I felt like sharing it with you all that I'm doing this because since we're talking about Atma Nirvar Bharat, Atma Nirvar leader, even a person as minuscule as me uh, has to make that real attempt to, uh, you know, to contribute to the nation. And if everybody starts doing in their own smaller way, I think so our vision can be realized very soon. Just to add on to Rashmiji, what you really, what you just said, I have seen a lot of people who really want to make or do a great change. But you know what happens? They don't start with step one. This They want to do it. They plan it in a very big way. You know, I want to uh, create so many, uh, uh, you know, I want to empower so many people, like thousand people. Now they will not start with 10, but they will aim for thousand. Hence what we need Atma Nirmar leader is not somebody who is a magician or is a charismatic leader or is an influencer on, uh, on, on Instagram who will have millions of followers. He's somebody who is silently sitting in any part of the country, but slowly doing his job. And he is confident and he is making first himself self-reliant and then he is contributing his bit to make India self-reliant. That is what is just enough. That's it. Yeah. Whatever you're doing, what you're doing, if you're happy and you feel that it's a contribution, not just for those kids, but if those kids tomorrow go into some, uh, you know, bright positions and they go into some and they become tomorrow a, a bureaucrat for the country and they, because of those learnings and those are bringing the way they have the, the mindset, they, vibe, have, yeah. they will have the mindset of giving in the context. Uh, like, in Atma Nirbhar, I just tell you, the, the, there is a definition for this Atma Nirbhar word in the Atma Nirbhar leader. One of the important element is accountability in that. Today, if you see, if I see, I am very uh, uh, vocal about it. But if just 10% of our political leaders in the country who is driving our nation, if they start taking accountability, if they, if somebody make them accountable for their work, just 10%, you will see miracles happening in India. We just have 
you know, handful of leaders who we see and who is doing meaningful work. There is a lot which is not highlighted. They are doing some great work, but in the remote areas who nobody, but they don't know how to market themselves. And hence, the Atmanirbharta will come only when we will create mini capsule success stories in small part of the countries. And then collectively, like one example of Atmanirbharta is uh, this, when, when Modi ji said you have to, you know, on the 15th of August, you have to host a flag, click a picture and then upload it. Everybody started doing it. Correct? And now, you know, what happens at that time? That was a, just a feeling of Atmanirbharta. That's not actually an action. That's just a feeling of being a part of a nation. But if we just see, if we take accountability of one small aspect, then I'm going, I'm working on a concept called Atmanirbhar politician. <laughs> then it's a very, very risky area to work on, but still I'm working on that aspect and I'm, I'm going to really have those talks in the future. I really want, you know, because the people who are leading us, if they are not Atma Nirbhar, then now we have to take the charge. Because they are not taking charge. There are very few of them who, on that line who is leading us, who we gave charge to lead us. They are not doing their job right. Now we have to take the point. That's how I think we need to. Yeah, that's democracy all about. <laughs> yeah, we need to take the charge. <laughs> and Thank it's you so, so much. Yes. And it's so yes, big as a, we are so big as a nation. Uh, yeah. We need to uh, really do something for ourselves. For, so start with ourselves first and then expect from others. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, innovative technologies play a major role in driving economic growth. So the fifth and the last question is, amidst technological advancements, how can Atmanirbhar leaders leverage digitization and emerging technologies to drive economic growth while maintaining ethical practices and inclusivity. Okay. Now, yes, ethical practice is the pillars of and uh, economic. Uh, uh, so that is a, a very, very fundamental about an Atmanirbhar leader. If they, they are into that zone, they have to be in that way. But now coming to how they can leverage technology. Now, the point is why they need technology and why they should leverage technology. They should leverage technology and why most of us are using technology these days. Number one, first is to market ourselves, is to showcase that we exist. Second, we are utilizing technology uh, for productivity. Correct. We are utilizing different uh, elements for our productivity, for, for ease of doing business. Uh, third, we are utilizing technology for doing certain innovation and research, uh, streamlining things, making things more structured and organized. Yes. And if, if all these power are given to the people who are trying to become an Atmanirbhar, this will speed up their uh, growth. This will help them. Hence, uh, all Atmanirbhar leader needs to be technologically equipped Rather, I will say technologically aware because I will not expect every leader to utilize technology. There are people, we have just a plenty of us are now, very uh, very few of us are able to, if you see the 140 crores of population or 130 crores of population in the country, uh, there are very few who are able to still utilize technology. Most of us, most of them, they utilize, they have the phones in their hand, but they use it for receiving and just disconnecting the call. Hence, what is more important is to make technology friendly to those people who are trying to become Atmanirbhar. Need of those kind of innovations in the country which are very friendly. If you see, now there are a lot of which is coming up. A lot of innovation is going on in that arena and that is really helping in improving productivity, improving innovation, improving their marketability and their market access. Few examples which has really impacted as a technology on the economic growth. If you see the recent example, the Aadhaar card initiative. Now we have one, one identity for the complete nation. That's a very, despite all the challenges, it is a very, very significant step taken for leveraging digital technology for governance 
and social welfare. Because of Aadhaar, there's various schemes which are linked to Aadhaar, which are now getting implemented. Uh, we are we are now proud. Earlier, we were just aware that there is a Paytm, there's a different platforms where, you know, you are, you're, you're making it, uh, your transactions very easy. But today, when we are the leading country in the world in those arenas, it has not only de democratized the trade and finance, but also has created new economic opportunities for small businesses to sell. Now, people can sm sell things, small, small initiatives, small things they can sell even through WhatsApp. They can sell through Facebook. They can sell through Instagram. Many women have been empowered. Now they're creating videos and they're just doing it. Hence, there is a very, very strong role, but everything comes with a caution. You need to make sure that you understand it well and then utilize it. Third, Digital India campaign. And very, very, very beautiful initiative, which uh, is not an initiative with a thought. It just arises because of a crisis, is the growth of teleconsultation and online education during COVID-19. The trainers got benefited. I have seen many trainers became the national success during the COVID. Similarly, the doctors, they have understood the importance of online consultation. And that has shown how technology can be harnessed to maintain continuity in essential services while ensuring inclusivity and accessibility, be it a, a most, uh, you know, a kind of a COVID time, such, such a kind of a, uh, what I will say about COVID-19. This is necessity some, of the time or need of necessity the of the time, but despite having such a crucial time, online consultation became a hit. So there was like, there is a crisis, but there is a, an opportunity. Now, teleconsultation and online consultation has become the, the new normal, which we can say. First resource of reaching out very quickly. Yeah. So yes, uh, leveraging technologically and ethically. Ethically is, uh, if you are thinking about the nation, you can't be unethical. So that's, that's the building block for an Atmanirbhar Bharat, for an, through an Atmanirbhar leader. You're so true. Necessity is the mother of all inventions. Correct. And uh, this has been proved right again and again. And yet during COVID also, you mentioned the vaccine. There was so much of resistance happening when we started thinking about Atmanirbhar Bharat and having our own vaccine. So uh, there's going to be a lot of challenges. The challenges in the mind, the ma challenges through our actions, Whatever. So uh, we have uh, a long way to go. Uh, but if each person is going to uh, decide and uh, is going to really promise themselves that they're going to contribute in some or the other way, define, I mean, not some or the other way, like you say, you should define it very clearly. So uh, I think so. Our vision is not that far. Uh, it has been a wonderful discussion, one, because uh, there are a lot of practical things that you spoke about and these are not just concepts that you spoke about. So uh, for the kind of practicalities and the practical solutions, Dr. Anshul, uh, you have given us. Thank you so much. And it was a thank great you. pleasure thank talking you. to you. Thank you so much. Thank you to the, all the viewers. And I, am, I just have one request to all of you. Uh, you know, there is Atmanirvar leader is not a certification program. <laughs> Correct. Uh, it's just, it's just a thought. It's just a beautiful thought which we have to inculcate. We have to start working on it. Just one day, one hour, one hour for the nation. If you just try to contribute, think of what you can do and start doing it. Don't plan for a bigger things that I will have an NGO. I will support an NGO. Just see where around you if you can do something and just feel proud of it. Document it, then you will feel proud about it. And just start doing something or the other, and we're going to have good Atmanirbhar leaders in the country, and we're going to be more proud of our country through these Atmanirbhar leaders. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. Ranshul and Rashmi. It was a very inspirational uh, episode today. We were able to understand what exactly the topic is all about and how we can implement many things which you always keep thinking about when we watch movies like Uri or there are many movies. There are this recent uh, series which I got inclined towards the name Freelancer in Disney Hotstar. I mean, like those guys, those kind of inspirational thought process you just provoked in within us today. 
I mean, uh, one takeaway I have today is knowledge uh, exchange with the, you know, empowering the domestic capabilities is something which is I am inclined to towards. Um, that is a sensitive matter, sir, if you actually look at it in a microscopic uh, aspect about hiring an individual in a corporate and understanding where you come from. That makes a lot of sense, I believe, and that makes a lot of difference in between us and not understanding how much experience you have. Like, do you have values? Do you have a value system? You come from where you are, you know, willing to come from. That should be enough. I mean, that's my takeaway today. And I have to tell you and nail it today that this is a wonderful episode. So far, I have existed. There is one, one before about yoga. And today it's been very, very inspirational for me. And my husband is towards the nation uh, part of, you know, uh, you know, watching the movies beat or he's very particular when it comes to national anthem. Everybody stand up and stand still. Nobody move. That's what he is. Uh, you gave me that vibe today, understanding how important it is to uh, believe and action towards being an Atman Irbar, a leader. Great questions, Ms. Rashmi. I, I should really appreciate you for the way you put across the questions today. It inculcated a lot of thought process, provoked a lot of uh, inner self-reliance today, understanding how we can implement a lot of stuff. Thank you very much for your time, Rashmi, today. I understand that you have an urgency to leave. So uh, I'll let you go and we'll continue the discussion with, with uh, Mr. Da uh, Mr. Dr. Anshul. And uh, thank you very much, Rashmi. Appreciate thank your time. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Divya. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Anshul, I'd like to talk to you about one thing here where you were talking about, you know, sparing your uh, knowledge not to a different country, but do it domestically. I have a person, a person who is an IITN. Uh, in 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 minimal of reels, I was uh, listening to a board of director of IITN talking about uh, get inspired about people who go and deliver their uh, experience in uh, urban areas and blue rural areas, right? Not people like Sundar Pichai goes there and you know deliberates the technology outside the world. Even though we all are inspired and proud about his work, I think. Um, being in our territory and making the people civilized and understand the technology where we are living in the age of bio war today, technology is something which we all need to be aware of. Like, how do you use it and how you shouldn't be using it? That is very that important. Is. And yeah. uh, technology wise, I am completely on to you, sir. And then talking about vision of nation, inclining towards it and, you know, walking towards the vision of nation is something which is very inspiring about today's episode. It was great connecting with you. I'm going to be keeping in touch with you uh, uh, post with, uh, this episode as well. It is great uh, talking about India as after uh, what Modi sir has done after the Independence Day, taking the picture and everything. Great. Thank you very much for all your insights today, sir. Um, I'd appreciate all of the team members. If you have any question, please raise your hands. Uh, considering the time limit, we have one question for the audience. Uh, please uh, raise your hands. We can post the question to our guest of honor. And uh, let's wait for any of the members to have any questions or we can move on towards our next part of the episode. I'll give it time for like two or three seconds if anybody have any questions. All right, lovely. So um, we'll move on to the next part of the uh, uh, episode today. Audience is still in the introspection mode. <laughs> I think, sir, to be very honest with you, this is a very sensitive issue which we are introspecting within ourselves. Yes. I'm able to talk because I'm able to correlate a lot of things which you were talking today. I put my mind and you know thought into you. And when you were talking about mindfulness of creating jobs and, you know, the the it is many things which is revolving in my mind right now in fact i have decided today that every training i do i am going to inspire one person about this i am going to be on the mission of that because that's how inspiring the session for me today i believe all the all the members today is also introspecting on the sensitive issue which we are talking about because we've never heard of atman about being a leader towards how we can connect to the vision of the nation right so yeah uh, being inspiring is what we all are today considering your talks and uh, the perspective you've given to us uh, great sir i think uh, we are closing this with Nelly Nayagam, sir, being our proud member, having a summary of uh, today's episode. Sir, let's have it very crisp and small summary so that everybody will be more inspired about your thought process. And after that, we can close the episode. Uh, as 
the you know considerable of the time welcome mr nalan aigam sir Good evening, Nadal. Thanks to BJ Training for this opportunity. Uh, dear uh, Ansel sir, and uh, really wonderful insights. And uh, yes, as uh, CMM said, uh, we made a lot of uh, thought-provoking points, and uh, we are uh, uh, go through our points, and we are uh, trying to understand what we have uh, not missed or what we have missed, and where we have to address it. And that's a key point, sir. Mm -hmm. On this, uh, on this particular overall point, and you mentioned that. Uh, attributes uh, contribute on fostering on a self reliant india the need for connecting ecosystem and visionary adaptability with change and altitude and thoughtfulness and resourcefulness yes. and as well as you mentioned that india as promoting the make in india concept and uh, vision for our own country or indian dream uh, vision has to build it further even uh, they added a woman empowerment and education also uh, into that into that and uh, you mentioned that innovation and entrepreneurship are the key pillars of this atmanirbhar and uh, we have to focus on this uh, innovation and entrepreneurship and especially uh, the spirit to be uh, focused for a drive it and the, that should be a marketable solution and to uh, for the uh, current and future problems yeah. on the various sectors yeah. and systematic and resilient and practical and creating a, a job for major majority for indians and accountability are the uh, key uh, elements and collaboration friend uh, you mentioned that uh, there should be a clear stand for a collaboration and the emphasis on technological uh, advancement and uh, recognition uh, of domestic strength especially uh, equipping a vocal for local and uh, even you mentioned an uh, example of embracing indian products like uh, dias for uh, self sufficiency and also you mentioned about uh, during hiring process we opt for untrained members only when we face budget constraint and local candidates should be given for a priority and considering for uh, promotion and nurturing uh, marginal uh, marginalized societies in achieving achievable through education and banking facilities provided by uh, ngos and this will create a big revolution yes. and making success stories is the important one accountability uh, plays a vital role and uh, the key points of uh, leverage technology market ourselves showcase we exist and utilize uh, technology for productivity ease of doing business and innovation and research and uh, making uh, structure and organized and more important uh, tech, uh, technology friendly for people and use ethically and uh, you have indicated an example of economical growth on uh, aadhar and digital payments and as yes. well as uh, digital india campaign for uh, teleconsultation and education thank yes. you sir thank you so much for summarizing it so well thank you thank you very much mr nalai sir it's it's a wonderful summary summary um great that you were able to recollect everything what we have speaking what we have been speaking since the beginning of the conversation uh lovely to you know just go back to the thought process again like i said it's 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 too much for, for us to you know uh, understand what is that we are missing where do we implement and how do we implement that most importantly great sir it is uh, lovely to connect with you and i believe time is giving me an opportunity to connect with you again and again to be more inspired uh, in the part of nation's perspective uh, we have a small vote of thanks video for you and i in meanwhile i thank all of the members and visitors for joining us today uh, being a great episode so i request arul to play the small vote of thanks video for our panel discussion as well as to our uh, guest for now post which we can close the session thank you much arul for the benefit of the time today we are doing the open network for the next next episode also understanding that you know there are many people who are caught up in a lot of uh, technicalities towards the connections so um i believe we're going to do the open networking for the next episode but however sir i'm telling you this i am going to be privileged by connecting with you today 
knowing you and understanding what kind of work you give to the community and the society sir lovely to connect with you and few words about our episode and what kind of work we do here sir and then we can post which we can close the session so uh, i'm i'm as i as i share in the beginning also i am uh, i'm somebody who is following uh, you know prakash and vijay training for a long time i am really i'm one of his fan i can say i'm really inspired by his work and his the way he has uh, you know created that concept of mask leadership then this leaders connect uh, you know one thing about the founder because i love the way he is consistently doing this thing without uh, any diversions into that aspect his clarity about being a good contributor uh, and and uh, taking things in this perspective uh community building is is a very very fundamental part of our indian ecosystem and the way we are now you are building this leaders connect community is also a commendable uh, thing which really is inspiring because these things you know maybe which whatever i am giving some some other speakers will come all these perspectives are toward a progressive nation or are toward something progressive or positive or or will give different perspectives to people and hence uh you know these these initiatives is very beautiful uh, i have attended few of those leaders connect uh, on and off in different ways and i've been uh, you know uh, taking thing i listening to these things now the point is um, why it is important and and as i said in the beginning the way what you're doing is also a, is also fundamental to building atmanirbhar leaders in the country be it with different names correct uh we we all brand things in the right way because we need to encourage people and connect people with those names but ultimately what we are trying to drive is leaders is okay. trying to create good prospectors leaders with positive attitude with good qualities doing something be it for their home be it for their nation uh you know one of the best leaders we have, we have ever seen all of us are our parents Yeah. Like, we were always atmanirbhar my yeah. father was an atmanirbhar first atmanirbhar leader my mother yeah. was the first atmanirbhar leader i have seen in my life yeah. correct they were they always despite any challenges they were resourceful they were resourceful. Any challenges um, they have been able to really give us the best, best upbringing possible best resources possible they have always nurtured us with the right and positive perspective uh, so all these things we have always been around these concepts the way you are doing it it's a contribution to the 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 story or the vision which we are trying to coin or build around atmanirbhar leaders and atmanirbhar bharat so hats off to you and for this initiative keep doing this wonderful work and uh, i wish you all the good luck for future sessions thank you very much sir heartful thanks also i should uh, tell you that being a last minute also you were able to come and join us and share your perspective with all of us my heartful thanks and congratulation for benefit what you are doing for the society please do connect with us if there is any sort of a support you require also um like i said i'm like i'm still inspired so i can talk for a couple of hours now so however it's okay <laughs> thank you very much appreciate your time and your support for all of us great mm -hmm. joining with you today um please uh, keep your um, you know josh going on <laughs> lovely and uh, thank you very much all for joining us uh, we'll you. connect with you for another another episode for the next wednesday thank you all the very best and uh, i will wish you all bye and good night thank you bye thank you. Good night.